Hello friends, this is Jerry Thomas from Sakshi Apologetics Network. Recently, we have a series of interesting events exposing the nature of certain religions as well as demonstrating the true nature of Christianity. I am speaking about the incident by Iranian now Canadian atheist Armin Nawabi. Almost 10-15 days back, Armin Nawabi had torn the paper of Quran and had eaten it. He similarly did with the pages of the Holy Bible as well. While it hurt the sentiments of many Christian believers, none of them abused him, none of them threatened him, none of them threatened or abused his family members or any of his relatives. But the response from the Islamic community was different. They were already abusing him and they threatened him to kill. They threatened his wife and abused her verbally. Now, during this incident, many of our Hindu friends were cheering the, these actions of toning the papers from the Quran and responding to the Islamic community. Of course, Armin Nawabi has every right to do whatever he wants to do because the law grants him that freedom. However, things turned when Armin Nawabi changed his focus to the Hinduism. He made a cartoon of the Hindu goddesses Kali and he said, if you have such gods with a provocative language, why would anyone choose another religion? Now, those who were cheering him turned completely against him. Many of them started abusing him, abusing his mother, threatening to kill him, filing cases in India. I do not know what that means because he is a Canadian citizen. Filing cases in India and every kind of trick, dirty trick that is in their book. Few days back they were cheering him up. Now they responded exactly how the Islamic community responded to him. Now you have these three incidents. He did provocative action against the Islamic community, against the Christian community as well as against the Hindu community. Both the Hindu and the Islamic community, many of them started abusing him. But the Christians never responded like that. Why is it so? That is the question that we are going to investigate it right now. It is my proposal that it is because of the robust biblical understanding of the human beings. Who are the human beings? And what rights did they have that gave rise to the matured Christian response? In contrast, it is a deficient understanding of the Vedic and the Quranic worldview that made the Hindus and Muslims responded in a negative way. We must be very sympathetic to these people because they do not have a robust understanding like the Holy Bible. Let me illustrate it. God of the Holy Bible is an eternal, all-loving, all-powerful, transcendent God over and against the, over this nature who created everything in this nature. Now this God made human beings in his image in his likeness both male and female we read that in genesis chapter 1 26 and 28 now this is a very powerful statement a god who is beyond everything all powerful making a creation in his image in his likeness then what would be the value of that creation here human beings what would be their rights? 
that is an amazing statement that has made the theologians ponder over it and meditate over it in fact one of the logical implication of this concept of human beings made in the image of God is given in the Holy Bible itself in Genesis chapter 9 verse 6 it says the right to life nobody can take away another life because man is made in the image of God now Bible has given all the things in a narrative way the Hebrew mind works in a narrative way not in a conceptual way Remy Break, French historian and philosopher specializing in Arabic, Jewish and Christian thought of the Middle Ages. He says we should not expect philosophical concepts in the writings of the Hebrew Bible because there are no concepts but deep thinking is involved in the narrative way. It is given in the narrative way. It is given as uh, say narrations of events, historical events, stories from where we should derive the principles and concepts. Now the Hebrew mind thinks in a narrative way. But the Greek mind or even the other, other people, they think in a conceptual way. They want actually the principles and the concept. Now when this Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament again written by the Jewish mind, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, when it went into the hands of Greek thinkers who thinks in terms of principles and concepts, they were forced to coin new words because there was nothing in their thought process that could express this narrative in a new way. We know Church Father Tertullian. When Tertullian started meditating upon this Holy Bible, he coined many new words. You can see in uh, to Scapula in his book chapter 2. This is Tertullian's book chapter 2. He coined for the first time in the entire human history the world called human rights. And he says it is a privilege of nature, human nature. It is inherent. It is not something given by the state or the society or a community but it is because of who they are they have certain inalienable rights this was the first time in the entire human history anybody is thinking about fundamental human rights this church father is the one who coined the word human rights now again we must remember this is the same church father who coined the word trinity as well because as I said in the Hebrew Bible, Trinity is given in a narrative way. But as a concept, it required somebody else to coin a word. Similarly, here he coined the word human rights. Now not only he coined the word human rights. In, now in his another book, Apology, chapter 24, Tertullian again coined a new word. Because he doesn't have anything in his entire Greek philosophy to express this new concepts ex uh, uh, given in the Holy Bible in a narrative way. And that new word was religious liberty. Religious tolerance was there existing. But religious liberty, he had to coin a new word because that was a new thought, a new re revelation given in the Holy Bible. Now what is the implication of it? The implication of all this is the individual, a person having his own right not granted by the society or not because he belongs to a social group is was a revolutionary concept in the entire ancient world. In the entire ancient world they never thought a person, an individual can have his own rights, not granted by the community. Let me give you some evidence for that. In Benjamin Constant, who lived in the 18th, 19th century, he was a Swiss French philosopher and a political activist. He wrote this, The Liberty of Ancients compared with that of Moderns in 1890, in which he says, 
the ancients had only social rights what do you mean as social right the group that group that you belong social group that you belong for example for it for us to easier to understand if you belong to brahmins then you have certain rights if you belong to kshatriyas you have certain other rights and if you are shudras your rights comes down this is what the other ancients also thought if you belong to certain social groups then you have certain rights but the moderns in fact inspired by the church fathers and this concept evolved the period of time when tertullian gave it was a new concept and over the period of time the church actually developed it through again the meditation of the holy scriptures and that was given to the moderns so this idea that a person can every individual has his own right was not there in any ancient society ancient societies except in certain ways the hebrew jewish society that i we would explain in another video later again benjamin constant says this social right was not above the religion a person cannot choose his own religion or the other matters that are given so he has social rights and those social rights are also constrained by certain other things whereas the individual rights are not constrained it is inalienable it is in the very fundamental nature of human beings nobody can take it away if you go by the strict definition of the individual human rights as understood by the church fathers and the theologians which was given to the moderns french historian numa denis fonstel he also in the book the ancient city a study on religion laws and institution of greek and rome in chapter 17 he says the ancients therefore knew neither the liberty in private life liberty in education nor religious liberty they never knew any of those things their rights were constrained into the social groups and that rights within the social groups were under the state or the religion so and further he says these rights whatever that an individual had the rights within that social group he could count it nothing against the state if the state wants to take it away like in the emergency period they can always take it away the indra that is what the indra gandhi did it in the emergency period because this understanding that it is inalienable to human nature is never imprinted in the mind of hindus or muslims if you speak to a hindu if you speak against the government obviously you will be dubbed as anti national because they think you as an individual comes under the state not above the state we will see how this erroneous concept is based on the deficient view and not having a robust understanding of who human beings are if they have only understood who human beings are they would have understood that, that the state is meant for the individual and individual is not meant for the state state should serve my purpose it is there to protect my liberty and i am not there actually to serve the state state is to serve me it is the reverse order but they never can understand it because for them it is always a deity and you are a person who counts nothing under that deity now let us come to the vedic understanding vedic understanding of human beings is not like that of the holy bible we know that in rigveda mandala 10 hymn number 90 it says that uh, the brahmins were created from the mouth of the purusha both the sams were kshatriyas were made from thais the vaishya was made and thus from feet shudra was made see here itself people are classified into different social groups the very concept they are classified into social groups of course then the rights will be according to that social groups only and we know that in fact human dr dp verma uh, and dr ramesh chandra who was a superintendent of police in uh, uh, police they both together studied about the human rights of an arrested person in ancient india 
what would be the rights of a person who is arrested in ancient India and this is the conclusion they have come which is published in the Journal of Humanities and Social Science volume 19 issue number 12 uh, in December 2014 page number 85 to 91 they say the greatest the great drawback of the state in ancient India was the rights of man as man were not fully recognized individuals and rights and duties not as components parts of the body politics but as members of the states or classes in society and consequently the rights and obligation varied according to the class to which the individual belonged this is what exactly we were speaking the individual doesn't have rights on his own of being a human but his rights is based on the social group that he belongs of course you take even the most fundamental right that is the right to life even there you will see the difference as we would have already examined the holy bible holy bible the basic fundamental uh, right to life in genesis chapter 9 verse 6 it is given to all equally irrespective of the religion class caste whatever you belong you have the right to life because you are made in the image of god but here people are already categorized into four categories in the creation itself and then there are mlechas outside that is a different story but in this four categories of hinduism if you read in the dharma shastra manusmriti being the most popular chapter 11 it says 55 it says that there is no penance there is no solution if you kill a brahman if you kill a brahman life for life but if a brahman unintentionally kills a kshatriya then he will have to purify himself with 1000 cows and a bull now that comes if he kills a Vaishya, then, then the, uh, it is a different value. And if he kills a Shudra, it is a different value. The value actually reduces. See, even the most fundamental right, right to life is not recognized as a universal human right within the Hindu understanding. Then why would you expect them to understand what is the right to freedom, right to expression, or right to liberty to religious liberty why would you expect them to understand it can never be implemented in their heart unless they change the worldview merely by adding it in the constitution doesn't change the culture the religion has to teach and only religion that can teach is the by the religion that is based on the divine holy bible and not on the human veras again this is the same similar understanding of the Islam. Islam is paganism re repackaged. It has nothing to do with the, uh, the Bible or uh, any of the traditions of the prophets. It is paganism repackaged with a mask of the Judeo-Christian worldview. In Quran, Surah chapter 200, 207, it says that Allah is full of kindness to his slaves. Human beings are basically considered as slaves. They do not have any value as image of God or bearing the image of an ultimate transcendent God, but they are merely slaves. They are considered as slaves. Again, Surah 315 uh, also we read the same thing. Now, if all human beings are considered as slaves, then there are obedient slaves according to Islam that is the Muslims and then there are rebellious slaves and then there are runaway slaves rebellious or disobedient slaves would be non-Muslims and runaway slaves would be the apostates so like any ancient society who would kill a runaway slave Islam also kills an apostate of course in Armin Nawawab's incident itself the threat to kill him because he is an apostate comes from this idea now what about the other rebellious or according to them the other rebellious slaves who are non-muslims in sahih al-bukhari fighting for the cause of allah or the book of jihad 
volume 4 book 52 hadith number 283 in english translation it says no muslim should be killed for killing an infidel you see the same concepts like in the uh, hinduism a brahmin killing a brahmin is an unpardonable sin but a brahmin killing a shudra is not an unpardonable sin similarly here a muslim killing a muslim is a grave sin but a muslim killing a non-muslim he shall never be punished with the death that is Sahih al-Bukhari one of the most authoritative hadith the authoritative hadith of the muslims similarly in sunnah abu dawud book of the blood wit hadith book 40 hadith number 4491 a believer will not be killed for killing an infidel infidel's life doesn't have the same value as the life of a muslim you see the similarities the social group that you belong determines even the most basic fundamental right the right to life then how would you expect these people to understand what is the right to uh, expression freedom of expression religious liberty how would you expect them to understand when they do not even understand the basic the most basic of all rights which is the religious which is the right to life now again we know that uh, uh, the islam is every aspect of life this segregation is there for example in sahih muslim book number 26 hadith number 5389 it says do not greet the greet the jews and the christians before they greet you and when you meet anyone of them on the roads force him to go into the narrowest part of it in the sense let him feel a dejected subjugated guy this is the attitude the book so called the scriptures so called the authoritative scriptures are promoting why because of their deficient understanding of who human beings are but as per christian every human being whether he is a christian whether he is a hindu whether he is a brahmin when whether he is a shudra or whether he is a mlecha in hindu understanding or whether he is a muslim or a non muslim it doesn't matter as long as you are a human being you have the value and none can take it away therefore the christians understand when the atheist does this they have the value they have the right and they are accountable to god for their actions and go because god has given them the freedom they are accountable to him but they have been granted this freedom by the holy god itself and we cannot take it away no matter how offended you are he has a right to do what he wants to do you see the world of difference between the christian understanding and the other two religions that is why the different responses comes christians will not threaten because they will recognize him as made in the image of god even if he despises and rejects it whereas the others because of the social group that he belongs he will not be given the same rights they will abuse and make him feel worthless you see the religious worldview what it can now this religious worldview did not remain at, at a doctrinal level it was applied at nations cultures let me give you an illustration if you read the declaration of american independence declaration of independence united states of america july 4 1776 it says this we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal the concept comes of the bible that they are endowed by their creator with a certain unalienable rights unalienable rights thomas jefferson in his private diary wrote the tertullian's quote in latin uh, because he remembered the same church father who coined the unalienable rights and it goes on to say that the that among these are life life genesis chapter 9 liberty and the pursuit of happiness and that to secure these rights governments are still instituted among them government is instituted to secure this life not to grant it human beings have it and whenever any form of government becomes destructive of any of this sense 
it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and institute a new government if the government tries to take it away it is not that you become anti-national in questioning it you have every right to abolish that government what a marvelous understanding of human beings if our hindu friends had this this marvelous divine understanding from the holy bible they would have never called gone around and calling others as anti-nationals it is because of their deficient understanding that comes from the uh, the book uh, like vedas and dharma shastras we must be very sympathetic to them because they were not given this uh, divine light of the holy bible it is our duty to teach them so that they come from the they come out of the darkness into the divine light of the holy bible now thomas uh, thomas jefferson himself it's uh, himself in notes on state virginia uh, written in 1782 he connected the rights with the religious liberty as well he said our rulers can have authority over such natural rights only as we have submitted to them the rights of consciousness we have never submitted and we could not submit we are answerable for them to our god the religious liberty is not under the purview of the government or the state or the anti conventional laws are an anti thesis is comes from a perverted view of human understanding it is so sad that many governments in india state governments in india are passing this anti conversion laws it is taking away the fundamental religious liberty and subjugating you to the purview of the state comes from the deficient understanding of the hinduism even islam carries the same thing we can only pray that they will come out of the darkness and understand the divine light of the holy bible in fact we began with the the atheist now there is one question to the atheist he enjoys that freedom but will his atheism gives that absolutely not you go to china the largest atheistic country or north korea another officially atheistic country will you have the right to criticize the government you will criticize the government and you will not live your right to life will be taken away in fact there has been attempts for example joseph arthur who lived in 1816 to 1882 gave a scientific understanding of the human nature and he finally wrote essay on in the inequality of races where he propagated that white race the white men they are superior to others ha racism scientific basis for racism in fact we should not dismiss this the original title or the full title of charles darwin's origin of species is this on the origin of species by the means of natural means or the preservations preservation of the favored race in the struggle for life and who is the favored race as per charles darwin it is the white men's race a racism to the core is where you end up if you follow that line now you might say no no we have come across now we have understand all human uh, all races are same and all fine but still you will not get the inalienable rights you will not get it either it is a community understanding or somebody has granted but but if you accept the holy bible then it becomes inalienable rights that cannot be taken away in fact certain atheist understands this marcello pera who is an atheist italian philosopher and a politician he was a former president of the italian senate from 2001 to 2006 he wrote a book called why we should call ourselves christians the religious roots of free societies despite being an atheist he says we should call ourselves christians why because only in the christian understanding you will have a strong solid foundation for the freedom that you are enjoying and he clarified this but there is a point one point i need to clarify from the very beginning he beginning it says 
by christian i mean judeo christian the core idea is that from the viewpoint of both judaism and christiani man is created in god's image and likeness in my opinion this is the religious source of the concept of personhood human dignity the foundation of the liberal view that the man has primacy over state and the state and the basis for doctrine of natural fundamental individual rights this is an atheist who knows the political power and he finally realizes it it is only the christian basis he being an atheist still says if we want to protect this there is only one way we should start calling ourselves as christians irrespective of the faith now to the atheist who wants to tear up the bible we have only one thing to tell him sir you can tear the pages of the bible but if you want the rights to be protected you have no other means armin nawabi other than as the italian former president of the italian senate said you should start calling yourself as christian atheism doesn't provide it it is an illusion he is also under the same illusion that his rights can be protected in an atheistic society absolutely not in an atheistic republic your even fundamental right to life can be taken away at any time it is only following the holy bible that you will have all these rights secure and maybe thank the god of the holy bible who gave us this divine bible without which we would have been in darkness like either the hindus or the muslims or the atheist we must thank god and that shows demonstrates ourselves in our response we praise god for this wonderful book and the wonderful divine revelation and the salvation which our lord jesus has given us may the lord bless us with his understanding of the word and guide this our beloved nation into the divine truth that the holy bible has revealed thank you all for listening we'll again have more videos explaining this concept elaborately later may god bless you all amen